Good morning. I didn't hear you. Yeah, now that's a good morning. That's a good morning. Yeah. I want you to join hands with your brothers and sisters now. And hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Just hold on. Yeah. Hold on now. Got you now. It's so good. Jan has joined us now. Yeah, so good. Standing up here. Be with you and you with us. Now hold on, hold on, don't give up now. Oh, we got something for you this morning. So don't give up. We're here to celebrate life. All kinds of life. New life. Old life. Any kind of life. We're here to celebrate life this morning. Nick's going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Reverend. Good morning, Glide family. If we could take a breath. Breathe in the spirit. As we say good morning, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning. This beautiful, beautiful summer day. We are so blessed to be here with our family and to be in community with our brothers and sisters to get the spiritual nourishment that we need to do our work as your soldiers of peace and justice. Lord, we really, really want to work hard for you, so please show us the way. Show us the times that we need to be more forgiving, more compassionate, and empower us to embrace everything that comes before us. So many of us are challenged, whether it's spiritually, financially, career-wise, kids, whatever. We are faced with so many challenges, but we know that if we stand with you and allow you to use us as a vessel, we can expect miracles. Miracles are ours for the asking, Lord. So thank you. Thank you for the healing that we've had. Thank you for our trials and tribulations that make us stronger. I want to keep the people in the southern United States that are recovering from Hurricane Isabel in our thoughts. Oh, thank you, Lord. And please help them out. Please help those that are not with us. If they need a healing, please touch them. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Shalom. Salam. Namaste. Good morning, good morning. It is now time for our community song. And we invite everybody in the audience to join us in singing this community song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. The words are on the wall. This little light of mine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. 
Thank you, Cecil. I would like everyone here this morning to join me in showing love to a very special young lady. And the young lady, her name is Ms. Classy Martin. Many of you may not know, but since she's been working with me all the time, she has shown the type of maturity and energy. This may be her first letter of reference. She is dependable. She gives 150%. She has gained the respect of every young person in the choir and my respect. And I want her to know that she is not going unnoticed and that I love her very much. And just a quick note, I almost forgot. Classy is celebrating her birthday this month also. Happy birthday, class. Happy birthday. Now, I guess while I'm up here, I'm getting used to this. It takes me great pleasure, for those of you who do not know, but we have uh, another very special item going on right now, and that is we are celebrating the happy birthday of Reverend Cecil Williams. celebrating the birthday of John Turk.
I'm going to open this right now. Right on now. 
Yeah. We're going to have a very special All right. event at this time. Madison is coming up with her mommy and her mama. <laughs> Come on up, Claire and Amy. Come on, Brad. Brothers and sisters, the celebration of christening or baptism is joyous, courageous, and a compassionate act. By this act, you are taking the risk of offering this child to the world. Now let us be silent for a moment. greeted each other. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. Madison <laughs> was born to Claire and Amy. And as Claire pushed, Amy held her in her arms. Jan was on one leg, and I held the other leg. And Brad and Paul, Pat, I'm sorry, Brad and Pat were taking pictures. Madison came into the world with great joy. What a child, what a child. Madison, your laughter is an invocation, inviting us to find love that goes beyond ourselves. This act of baptism, this blessing brings this community, your beloved mothers, your beloved family into a circle to celebrate you as you leap into life without the burdens of our worries or our wounds. This act of baptism, this cleansing, removes barriers of convention, prepares an open path for your possibilities, for the freedom of your choices. Madison, child of light, child of love, you arrive to remind us of wonder and liberation, the joy of living in the open. You inspire us to see the miracle of God, who is you, 
new life, hope for peace in our world that will be in your small and wondrous hands. Now to the mommy and the mama, to the uncles, to the godparents and the grandparents, and to all of the friends and loved ones, and to the community at large. Madison, I baptize you in love, and I baptize you, that's right, play with the microphone baptize you in freedom and I baptize you in liberation and finally Madison I baptize you in righteousness Could we have all of the friends and kin folks who came? Stand up, stand up, yeah, wherever you are, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Amy, it's time, well, I want to make this announcement, and then we'd like for you to come and take up the offering. My brothers and my sisters, we invite you to come to something different in your life. We want you to join Goliath Fellowship. It is different. You have already experienced a different kind of family. And what a great family it is. Two mamas. That's great. And so, my brothers and my sisters, we invite you to experience what is new and what is ongoing and what is vision. Join us after this celebration in the first room that you come to on your left as you go out that door. And in a short time, you can be a part of our community, of our fellowship. Thank you very much. Come right on, Amy, and give us the word. <laughs> I'm getting everything today, rolls and everything. Good morning, Glide Ensemble. Good morning. That was a head fake. I do like that. Good morning, Glide family. So I'm going to take up the offering. So ushers, if you could get ready at the bank, at the bank, at the back. <laughs> Subliminal advertising. Bank, bank. So, can you imagine a huge air conditioner? Give us your money. Okay. <laughs> Ushers, you could get started. Um, I simply want to talk just a, a little bit about Glide today, because um, what you just saw is, for those of you that don't come here every Sunday, that isn't just, well, every once in a while. Um, community, love, unconditional love, honoring diversity, uh, empowering the marginalized is what Glide is all about, 24-7, 365 days a year. 
The work that's done here, which is 86 different program entities, covers the gamut from feeding people on the food line. I don't know if uh, many of you have been out there to see how many people, a million meals we will serve this year on the food line. And it is the work and the labor of love of the folks that work here at Glide every day, not because of the money, not because of the fame, but because they believe that it's the work of God that they're doing. I believe that too. I believe when you get someone like Cecil Williams here for 40 years, and you get Douglas Fitch here, and you get Jan Mercatani here, it's not just coincidence. I think that something out there said, these people need to help change the world. And that's exactly what we're doing. So what I'd like you to think about today, I know that uh, we're heading into the holiday season. I also know for many of you, the economy is not that much better. So I understand that. But I'd like you to give as much as you can give because we do need the money and the money goes directly to the programs. Um, every penny goes directly into the programs. Uh, and if you're interested in more about the programs, you can visit our website www.glide.org or also in Freedom Hall, there is a description of all the programs. Okay, so you guys are going to give some money? Yeah? Is that an affirmative? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that kid was about two. Yeah. All right. And thank you all for welcoming our community, Claire, my community, and being so generous this morning to let us have Max Madison's christening here. So we really appreciate it. Am I supposed to give announcements? Okay. What? You want? You were gonna do? Them? <laughs> Excuse us. I'm gonna do them. No, I can. Can I have your glasses? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. So there's a really important thing that's happening from one to four today. I really want to stress this: the third annual Glide Potluck in the park will be held from 1 to 4 in Glen Park Recreation Center. We hope you will join us. Buses will be leaving Glide between 12.30 and 1 right outside. Is that right? So please, it's a great thing to do, a really fun way to meet new people, hang out with folks, and just have some fellowship on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Very cool outside. There will be a breeze, and you should go. Uh, Glide's youth... Family, uh, Family Youth and Child Care Center will be having a poetry workshop for youth and children today from 11 to 12.30. So just go right from here to that and then get on the bus. Uh, in room 206, this creative workshop is open to all children and youth and food will be served. Some of the po poetry generated in this class will be published in an anthology titled, What Matters? Attention shoppers. That's what it says here. Support Glide's HIV services while enjoying discounts at Macy's. For $10, you'll receive 10 to 20% off at Macy's on September 27th. 100% of your $10 passport ticket will help support Glide's HIV services. Stop by Freedom Hall and buy your $10 ticket today. Positive parenting classes will be offered at Glide starting September 3rd. Anyone interested in developing their parenting skills uh, should stop by Freedom Hall after services and pick up a flyer at the volunteer table for complete information on the classes and how to sign up. Go see somebody at the volunteer table in Freedom Hall. Hope Line, um, Glide's lay ministry program, offers a lifeline of person-to-person -person care to Glide family in times of crisis and celebration. For information, please pick up a flyer or speak to a Hope Line representative, again, in Freedom Hall. And last but not least, does, do you guys have everything? Stacy, I'm sure you're quite prepared. Okay, let's go, let's hit it. <laughs> I, I'll say, I, I promise. Yes.
is available in Freedom Hall, and the money goes directly to the programs. We have a video there. Uh, you want to hold that up? This is a video of the Glide Ensemble. Go down and get it. It's great. So thank you, and have a great Sunday. There's birthday cake for Cecil at the picnic. Oh, the pain. So you 
on. Gotta keep, keep on. I gotta keep, keep on. Keep on, I keep on, I keep on, I keep on, I keep on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to keep on. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Turk, Ron Southern and the Change Band. Ronnie on drums, Glenn on bass guitar, Tim on lead guitar, Joel on trombone, Dave on trumpet, Charlie on saxophone. <laughs> Happy birthday to all the birthday folks. Cecil, may you have many, many more. Many, many more. Congratulations to Amy and Claire and Madison and to all who came to support them today as they enter this community in a very special way. Let us be in prayer, sisters and brothers. Oh God, today we again walk into mystery. We face the future not knowing what the days and months will bring us or even how we will respond. But we ask that you will be love in us as we take our journeys. May we welcome all who come our way, deepen our faith to see all of life through your eyes. Fill us with hope and abiding trust that you will be with us and in us 
amidst all of our joys and all of our sorrows. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Keep your head up. My, my, my. Keep your head up. <laughs> because the morning sermon is, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. You know, if we really want balance in our lives, we need to be able to accept, tolerate, and even embrace a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unanswered questions. You know, you'll have more questions and answers and a lot of chaos. And all too often in our fear of this uncertainty and the fear of our chaos, we find ourselves trying to put together things that fit very badly. Hmm? Or may not fit at all. Amen, huh? But convincing yourself that a bad idea is a good idea is a bad idea. Amen, okay? It's a bad idea. And in Exodus chapter 32, we read about a very bad idea. Amen. 32 verse 19. When Moses came near the camp and saw the golden calf and the people dancing, his anger flared. Israel was worshiping an idol. Moses threw down the stone tablets and smashed them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. You can't make a bad idea into a good idea. Amen. Moses has spent a long time with God. And verse 1 from Peterson reads this way of that 32nd chapter. When the people realized that Moses was taken forever in coming down off the mountain, he'd been there 40 days and 40 nights. You know, uh, out of sight, out of mind. How easily we forget they rallied around Aaron, his brother, and said, Do something, Aaron. Make gods for us who will lead us. <laughs> that Moses, the man who got us out of Egypt, who knows what happened to him? You see, when we look at our own individual and group circumstances, we find it difficult to embrace the chaos that may be there or the unanswered questions that still linger. And in our anxiety, we put together things that fit very badly or don't fit at all. And so while the writer of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 reminds us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, we nevertheless as human beings look for evidence. We want quick fixes, amen. We want certainty and we will create it even where there is none, amen. That's our style. In far too many instances, this very human weakness for evidence tempts us to transform even our Moseses into our deliverers, our heroes, and ultimately into our, our gods. It ain't Moses' problem. It's our problem. Amen. Huh? You see, God's covenant is very clear. God's covenant is clear. I will be your God, and you will be my people. I am a jealous God. I will have no other gods before me. So God liberates us to be free to serve the world, free to be a living, loving, just, faithful people. And that is part and parcel of the essence of liberation. Amen. You see, God acts to deliver us from every form of slavery and in turn, as a transformed, liberated people, our mission now is to co-create with God a liberating presence where we work with God to change the world. That's our mission, and that's what we're about. In our scripture, Moses was gone too long. And the people who followed him out of Egypt had gotten the idea that Moses and not God had delivered them. So when he was gone, even temporarily, the people, with the help of Aaron, created their own gods. You know what kind of gods we create. 
gods that we can handle, gods that we can touch, gods that we can see. They created gods they can manage. Hmm? Gods that are subject to our whims and our fickleness and our changing circumstances. Now you know the kind of gods we've had. Amen, huh? That's the kind of mess we're in. Amen. Using those gods to get us straight. Well, they could not accept, tolerate, or even embrace the sense of chaos that comes with the absence of answers, quick answers, easy answers. And when Moses was not present and they misunderstood who had delivered them from slavery, they went there. They found somebody else. Hmm? They began to do it themselves. Amen. But we do not have to live life as an emergency. We do not have to live life as an emergency. You know, one drama after the other drama, after the other drama, after the other drama, huh? All the drama kings and queens, just raise your hands. Amen, huh? We're here, huh? We're here. They were so anxious, so fearful, they could not tolerate the risk of developing their own faith without the presence of a Moses to stand over them. But risks come with freedom. Risks come with being liberated. No risks, no courage, no freedom. And however small our steps of faith may be, we must take them ourselves, whatever our circumstances may be. No one, not even Moses, can take them for us. Why? Because if we cannot risk, we cannot grow. If we cannot risk, we cannot grow. And you wonder why you're still in the same place that you were two years ago? Hmm? Huh? You got to step out on it. Hey Amen. Huh? You got to step out on it. I don't care how difficult it may seem. You just got to go on and step out there. Huh? Step out into nothingness and find something. It's there for us. It's there for us. And if we cannot grow, we can never become our best selves. Hmm? The only way you and I become the best that we can be is to take a few risks. Amen, huh? huh? You got to risk something, huh? Even if it ain't the right thing, risk it! Get on out there, huh? This is not the first time you fell on your face. Huh? And it won't be the last. Get on out there, fall, and get back up and go through it again. That's all right. That's what life is all about. That's what life is all about. Get up and try it again. Huh? You know, in the in Hebrew scriptures, there's another book about Daniel. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, built a golden idol and said, uh, uh, I want everybody to fall down and worship this golden idol. Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro, Abednego, amen. He said, I want you to fall down and, and, and worship my idol. You didn't know that was in the, in the scriptures, did you? Huh? You didn't know that was in the scriptures. Read your Bible, amen, huh? It's there. And Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down, I will put you in a furnace of fire. And these fine young men of Hebrew tradition said, we will not worship your idol. Our faith lets us know that God can and will deliver on time. On time, huh? I want you to check this. There is a conjunction here. It's the but. I call it the divine conjunction. He said, but if God chooses not to deliver us, our faith in this God will not diminish. We're going to stand tall no matter what happens. We're going to go through whatever life presents to us. And so they get caught, cast into the fire, but we've always been in heat. Amen, huh? This is not the first fire we've been in. We go through fires all the time. 
threw him in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar looked in and said, my goodness, I put in three, and now I see four. Amen. God's angel has come to even take care of those while we're going through the fire. We walk by faith and not by sight. Our faith keeps us intact. That's what liberation is all about. Simon Peter and the disciples were in a boat on the sea, awakened out of the storm, afraid, and who comes walking on the water? But Jesus, hallelujah, huh? walking on the water. <laughs> and he said, don't be afraid. And then he said something more. He said, Simon Peter, come on out here and meet me. <laughs> come on, come on out here to greet me. And sure enough, in that moment, Simon Peter stepped out the boat and started walking on water. And then he looked around at the circumstances, huh? And then he said, oh, my God, huh? and began to see, took his eyes off of the prize and began to look at his own human circumstances, lost his sense of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, ye of little faith, ye of little faith. You see, we've been walking on water for 40 years here at Glide. Hallelujah. It's all been a, a, an exercise of faith. Every program is an exercise of faith, a clinic, a feeding program. Every exercise is a, every program is an exercise of faith. Our mission is an exercise of faith, huh? Who dares to believe that they can break the cycle of violence and addiction and of all forms of slavery? God believes that it can, huh? We walk by faith and not by sight. Our budget is a faith-based budget, walking on water budget, amen. We were, we were in our board meeting on Friday night, and uh, as we came toward the close, looking at the expense forms and sheets, one of our board members turned over and hollered at Cecil, looked at the figures and said, they don't, you know, I don't know how to make it. He said, how can we do this every year? Every year, huh? We can't make things, but somehow it happens every year. By faith we do it. That's what it's all about. By faith it happens every year, every year. This is a faith-based community. Who would dare believe that Christians and Jews and Buddhists and Hindus and agnostics and all of us could get together, gays and straights and, and you name them, we can all, Asians and African Americans and Anglo Americans and Hispanic Americans, huh? Who believed that we could ever come together under one roof and one community? Faith makes that happen, that's all. Faith makes it happen. We believe it. That's why it happens. Walking by faith and not by sight. You see, at Glide, we believe in the sun even when it's not shining. Huh? At Glide, we believe in love even when we don't feel it. At Glide, we believe in God even when God is silent because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Meet my, uh, those of you that have not met my daughter and my, my granddaughter. Stand up, Kaya and Kim. This is my daughter and my granddaughter. Let's stand, everybody. Here we go. You are ready? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, as we stand, Let's give a rounding round of applause for our sermon from Reverend Douglas Finch, everybody. We thank you for coming. May the rest of your weekend be a great weekend. Would you take the hand of the person next to you? We shall overcome. 
talk it.